This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Perfect. We're looking for ways every time to see how to connect ourselves in a deeper way, in a more meaningful way to, to Hashem. And for me, it's, um, I feel that even just to say, looking for ways to believe in Hashem, seeking for Hashem, things that we're using, like ways of expressing our thoughts, if you don't really put your heart into it, if you don't really understand what, if you don't really think what did you, about what you say, it's like empty words, okay, like, let's think about ways how to connect ourselves to Hashem, like, what does it mean? Who is Hashem? How we connect ourselves to Hashem? Who is Hashem for you? Who is Hashem for me? Is Hashem that I believe in, that I'm thinking of right now, is the same Hashem that you think of? There are no two Hashem, there is only one Hashem. So who is He? What are we talking about? To connect ourselves to Hashem. There is a person that will tell you that when he's happy, he feels connected. Someone else will tell you, happiness doesn't have nothing to do with that. You need to do what you've been told to do. You just need to keep the tradition. You just need to follow the rule. Like everyone will... So what is the real connection? That's why even just to say words like, I want to connect myself to Hashem, for me, it feels like, I might say, empty things with no real meaning. I really want to find a way to connect myself to the truth, to find the real connection that will give power to my soul to grow, to, to find more about itself, more meaning that my inner search, that my mission, that my travel, that my track will be much deeper, more meaningful, will bring me to good results that won't be only joyful or satisfying or to myself. I really want to find a way to connect myself to what that I supposed to connect myself to, to the real purpose of life. Now again, as a number of people you know, that's the number of opinions that you'll hear about journeys and about purposes and about like what you should do with your life. But there is only one truth. There are many ways to reach that truth. There are many opinions on how you should do it, but the result must be one. Because truth, there is only one. For an example, you can say only one truth about that thing. It's a pen. That's the truth. It's a pen. But you can say on it that it's a pencil. It's one lie. You can say on it that it's a plastic spoon. Second lie. You can say that it's a person that it's not that person, it's a third person. Like, the number of lies that you can make up on that object is almost with no end. It's as the number of options that you have in this world. But truth, there is only one. It's a pen. It's my pen. It belongs to me. I received it from my wife. She wrote my name on it. That's the truth. There is only one truth. Many, may, maybe with many details to it, but in reality it's only one thing, what that it is. So really to connect ourselves to Hashem is to connect ourselves to the truth. Because our God is the God of truth. And when we want to connect ourselves to Him, so we must do it with truth. Now many times I spoke about that thing and many times I saw that my words were strong and powerful and reached into the hearts of my, my, my friends, my students, people that listened to me and made a sign, made a, 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 a mark on their hearts and touched their hearts to understand that they need to find their truth. 
to find out who they really are and how they should really connect themselves to the truth. But I want to tell you that as long as the wisdom of yours will be based on someone else's teachings, it won't be perfect. Even though that I am able to inspire you in so and so ways, I have my life experience, I can tell you fascinated stories, amazing things that I experienced, it can touch your hearts. But really for you to find out the real truth about who you are and what is the real purpose of your life, this is already your life mission. This is something that you need to desire with all your hearts. You can enjoy something you can benefit from something, but really it's only a wake-up call for you to go on your own and to be independent and to find who is Hashem for you in your life, in your house, with your family, with your challenges, with the situations that are surrounding you. Over there you should be that person that is desiring the truth or else you won't find it. Even if you'll have your one hour a day that you're listening to that inspiring speaker and his words are so like purifying you and you feel so good and it's fantastic. If this is the only time of the day that you are working on your faith, you won't achieve completion. You won't complete your journey. You won't achieve perfection in, 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 in reaching the truth. Because the truth is something that happens in the present, in the now. Now, in reality, we are sitting here, standing in the same room. That's the truth. That is reality. Now, we're broadcasting this class on Facebook Live. That's truth. That's reality. Now. Now, if we will talk about the past, if we will talk about the future, Already we can have many, many options on how to describe the past and how to dream and hope about the future. In the past and in the future, there is no 100% way to hold the truth because it depends in the power of our memory and it depends in what that will happen in the future. There are many things that depends in what will take place. About the past, I can remember one side of the story and someone else will remember a different side of the story. So we will find it very hard to reach the truth about the past, even if we will talk about it for years. For an example, I can talk about Abraham, the head to the believers, that he was such a righteous man, and he was the one that married Sarah, and he was the one that had Isaac, Yitzchak, and he was that one that Hashem spoke with him. And in reality, in my mind, I never saw Abram. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just thinking that I can understand something because I read some books, and I heard some explanation, but in reality, I don't know what I'm talking about. Do you know what you're talking about? Have you ever seen Abram? You remember Abram? Do you remember Abraham Avinu that you know? Oh yeah, Abram! No, you don't know what you're talking about. Was he tall? Was he short? Was he dark? Was he bright? Was he fat? Was he thin? Was he talking fast, slow? What was... What? We have verses. We have stories, we have Midrashim, we have righteous people that told us few details, but we are interpreting, we are explaining to ourselves a story that it's to make believe, we want to believe. We are building to ourselves a story about the past, and I'm not saying that it's wrong, it's fantastic. That's the way that we are connecting ourselves to reality in the past, but in reality, we're just making up stories in our own minds. For you, Abram was tall and strong and powerful and he was holding a staff and wearing a, a white cloak. And wonderful. Wearing sandals. Great. For someone else, Abram was a Litvish, skinny person. 
was totally serious, walking with his Gemore and to, to learn Torah. <laughs> like, how can you argue? I remember once I was learning Torah, I was learning in Esha Torah in Jerusalem, in the Yeshiva Esha Torah in Jerusalem. And one of the children of Rab Rabbi Noach Weinberg, Alava Shalom, he was teaching a class in Gemara. And he was reading the Gemara with the Ashkenazi accent. That was the way that like, he, he was reading like that he'd been taught. And like it's very different from the way that I am pronouncing the, the holy language of Hebrew. Like we grew up as Israelis, it's a different accent. You read the vowels in, in a different way. And I, in, like that's me, what, what can I do? Like, it's not my fault that he allowed me to participate in his class like, and when I was already there so and I wanted to learn so I asked him why are you talking like that like why are you reading I didn't know anything I asked him why are you reading the letters that with with the vowels in that way he said that's how our ancestors were talking so I, I looked at him and like Seriously? Like, you really believe that that's the way that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, that's the way that they were talking? With Ashkenazi accent? And he said, yes! I said, okay. I cannot argue with that. That's his tradition. Maybe that's what he, what he believes. The Yemenites, they believe something else. The Moroccans, they believe something else. Everyone are basing their thoughts on a tradition on the rumor that passed from one generation to the next. I'm not saying that they're not right. I'm just saying that it's still kind of vague. It's not clear. Because there is only one truth. Abram was talking only in the way that Abram was talking. He wasn't talking also like Ashkenazim and also like the Yemenites. He was not talking also like the Moroccans and also like the um, Iraqi, Iraqi and so on. No, he's not. He was not. He was only talking like Abram was talking. It was Abram's speeches. And that is the truth. Now, we're not holding that when we're talking about the past. No one knows. Even if you're right, it's an accident that you're right. Because you don't know the truth. We don't know. We just want to believe that we are right, that we're close to the truth. And about the future, it's even more vague. You don't know. You don't have a clue about the future. No one knows. We have prophets, we have prophecies, we have stories, we have m many opinions, many ways, many options. In reality, we don't have a clue. We don't know. In reality, you don't know what will happen. If it will happen today or tomorrow, in the next day, day after that day, you don't know. We just hope. We just want to. We're making ourselves to believe. But in reality, in the present, it's very easy to attach ourselves to the truth. Because in the present, you're not attaching yourself to the truth based on your interpretations. Just the reality is taking place in the present. Things are happening now. What that happened in the past, you cannot reach it. It's not available to check. Is this that book or that book? We don't know. It's written that he read in the book that called Toldot Adam. Okay, so now you're going to take out from the library bookcase a book that it's, the name is Toldot Adam. But you don't know if it's that book Toldot Adam or a different book that had been called Toldot Adam 2,000 years or 3,000 years ago. You don't know. There was a book that named Toldot Adam. If it's that book or another book, you don't know. Why? Because it's in the past. But today, if there's a book and its name is Toldot Adam, that's its name. Because it's, it's his name and you know it because you can hold it, you can touch it, you can feel it, you can see it. So the truth is in the present right now. So if you're basing your connection to the Creator based on tradition, based on the past, based on classes that you heard even five minutes ago, you're already disconnected from the truth. Because the truth is only something that you can grab right now. When you are a person that is a truth seeker, then you'll grab the truth. If you're up and if you're down, if you're high and if you're low, if you're right and if you're wrong, 
You're going to connect yourself to the truth in reality because you can if you want to. It depends on your will. So those classes, my child, he had a birthday. He was six years old, we were all happy. And the next day, he asked, did my birthday finish? We told him, no, because you're still six years old. Now there was a holiday. Wonderful, we celebrated, it was fun, it was amazing. Now the holiday finished. Did it finish? No, it didn't finish. We're taking that holiday with us. It's part of our life. You are six. The six, your birthday, the age that you achieved are not going nowhere. You are six and one day. Your birthday is on and now you're even elder. We have another day on top of your birthday, on top of those six years. Another day and another day. No, it didn't finish. The holy day, it didn't pass. Oh, Sukkot finished, Pesach finished. It doesn't finish. It charged your battery in a way that you're now holding all of those holy days inside of you. And you should take that cargo with you to the future. And you're going with the holiness of those holy days to the next holy days, to the next week, to the next month, to the next year. That's how you take the light with you. And it doesn't finish. Nothing finish. You continue with the wisdom that you're buying, with the wisdom that you purchase in life, and you go and grow further and further on. And you keep on stepping toward the future to that goal that Hashem is setting for us in the day of redemption. And until that day, we must be those truth seekers that are connecting ourselves to the truth in every moment of our life. If a person for him to be close to Hashem, it's only when he is learning Torah, it's only when he is doing Hit Bodedut, his individual prayer, it's only when he is able to pray in a synagogue, it's only when he is able to celebrate the holy days out of wealth and prosperity. So when he will find himself in a challenge, in a test, in a difficult hour that he's not able to learn as he wish, that he's not able to pray as he wish or to buy whatever he wants to buy for himself and for his beloved ones, he will feel, and it's wrong, and it's a mistake, but he will feel that he's been rejected by Hashem, that Hashem doesn't want him to serve him anymore, because here I can see that Hashem doesn't let me learn, here I can see that Hashem doesn't let me pray, here I can see that Hashem doesn't let me buy all the things that I need for the holy day, so maybe Hashem doesn't want my learning, maybe Hashem doesn't care about my prayer, that's why He doesn't let me pray. Maybe Hashem reject my holidays because I messed up in the last one, so maybe that's why this one is so hard. No. Your mistake starts with the fact that you think that you can serve Hashem only when you are learning, only when you are praying, only when you are rich. But the truth is that if you will connect yourself to the truth in every moment, you will be attached to Hashem no matter where you will hold no matter where you will be. Like that King David said, even if I'll walk in the valley of death, over there, between the shadows of death in the darkness, over there I'll be attached to you. I won't see anything bad. Why? Because you're with me. Confidence in Hashem is to know that Hashem is with you. You cannot always connect yourself to Hashem because your mind doesn't always work. Not always you can find that Wi-Fi, that connection, to connect yourself. Sometimes you're lost. Sometimes you are confused. Sometimes you're suffering. Sometimes you, life are cha is challenging you. Sometimes you, 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 you're lost. You don't know what to do. But in that time you need to remember that Hashem is attached to you. That Hashem is surrounding you. That the night is shining like the day. The darkness is equal to the light. To the most brightest day. Because Hashem can see through the darkest hours. Because Hashem's love to His creations, to His children, never stops. And will never stop. But our eyes, because they're physical, 
because they're basing their interpretations, their understanding on physical things, so then they're lying. They're not answering the honest and sincere answer to our thoughts, to our questions. You cannot find the answer of truth in a world that is called the world of lie. Alma de Shikra. This world is a thick and dark world that is blocking the light of Hashem. And that's the purpose of this creation, to block the light of Hashem. Now we as spiritual souls that are trapped in physicality, in our bodies, in this physical world, we're on a mission to break the code, to find the truth, to recognize the hidden godliness between the cracks of the creation. But in reality, the world is not presenting godliness as it is, just minimizing the light of the Creator into figures, into shapes, into smells, into colors, into figures, into weights. And by that, twisting the endless and magnificent light of the Almighty. And the only way to connect yourself to the truth is by having faith. Because the faith is a gift that's been given to us to use at nights, at the darkest hours. The faith is in the night. The faith is the light of the moon that is shining the roads, the ways in the darkest hours. It's not shining like the day. It's not bright like the day. We cannot see clearly like we can see in the day, but it helps you not to lose your way. It helps you to recover your confidence, to heal yourself, to know that you can see something, to remember that there are things to hold on to in life. It gives you hope. It gives you that lifeline that is needed for us not to lose our mind in this dark world that we're living in. And that's the mission. That's the purpose of our creation. That we will go and keep on searching for the truth with no end. And not to reach to that fantastic day of redemption. That will be the result when the time will come. But it's not the purpose of our life. The purpose is not to bring redemption. Because if to bring redemption would have been our purpose, we would have the ability to do that. But thousands of righteous people and millions of honest souls until today died and sacrificed themselves for that cause, for that purpose, to bring redemption and redemption is not here yet. It will happen when the time will be right. Our purpose is not to bring redemption. It's to remember the redemption. It's to expect it to come. It's to hope for it every moment. You cannot bring the day. You cannot make that wonder. It's not in the power of the most holiest people that are surrounding us. Not, was not even in the hands of those righteous ones that been praised in earlier generations as the pillars of the world, as the light of those generations. Even they had to, no matter which effort they put, the result was that they all failed in bringing redemption. Even the Arya Kadosh, that for a certain moment in his life, it seemed like Mashiach is coming, he asked, he had to ask his students, are you willing to go to Jerusalem together? When they were doubting, when they failed in their faith, that's it, the redemption been took from their rabbi, from the Arya Kadosh, and he was not able to redeem them anymore. 
So you can see from that that the redemption was not in his hands to bring it or not. It won't de it was depend in so many other things, deeper conversations in other houses between people that were talking and faith of other people. All those things were also on the scale and the Ariya Kadosh didn't have the control on that side of the scale. He could only be who that he was in that hour and it was not enough. And not the Lubavitcher Rebbe brought the Geula, and not Rabbi Nachman of Breslev brought the Geula, and it's not because that they were lack of something. It was only because that it was still not time. Not Abraham, not Isaac, not Jacob, not Yosef HaTzadik, not none of those huge pillars of light could bring the redemption. Because the redemption is something that will take place in the right time in the right moment when the Creator knows that that is the right time for the redemption to come. Our purpose is not to bring the redemption. Our purpose is to prepare ourselves to the redemption. Our purpose is to build ourselves as believers, to build those vessels of trust and faith in ourselves and in the hearts of all of our beloved ones to cheer them up and to strengthen their hearts and to, to, cheer, to, to give them hope and to give them confidence and to teach them the way that they should walk in to find the truth. And then when there are going to be enough vessels and when humility will grow and people will understand that the ways of Hashem are wonderful and hidden from our eyes, and that we just need to seek for them as much as we can and to put our heart and our minds to it and all of our power to that purpose suddenly in one moment it will all take place suddenly we all gonna be one moment after the redemption took place already suddenly we're gonna live in a different world in a different atmosphere in a different environment Everything going to roll in different ways. Suddenly you're going to think about something and it's just going to take place in your life. You're going to pray for something and you're going to see that it's happening. The level of supervision will rise in such a magnificent way that you will see the godliness face to face. That you will see that all the things that you think of, that you pray for, that you need, are running to your hands, being served to you on a plate of silver, silver plate. You're going to see and recognize godliness. And until that moment that will come, we need to prepare ourselves to that by increasing and working on our level of faith. And today, to be a real believer, it's not to live in the light. Because the faith is not in the day. The faith is in the nights. So we must accept the fact that we need to go through some challenges in life. And we must understand that our purpose is not to look for the joy and to look for the satisfaction. It's to look for the truth of those experiences. Because in times of challenges, the person is being tested. And when the person is being tested and he's passing those tests, so then he is rising. Then he is climbing. Then he is achieving things that are opening doors that there is nothing else in the world that can open those doors except of those holy, humble thoughts that his inner intention is being expressed in those moments that he's aiming his heart to the truth and when those hard hours are coming and sometimes are washing us like waves and we don't know what to do with those challenges and sometimes it's surrounding us like the sea surrounds one boat doesn't know how to sail, doesn't know which direction to take, doesn't know which route there is in the sea, doesn't know how to choose the right path and you're finding yourself like a lost ship in, in, in a stormy sea. And in that moment that you're calling from the bottom of your heart, from that hard hour with an honest prayer, 
what that you're doing is that you're breaking the nature to pieces you're breaking the nature of the physical creation and by that honest prayer that is revealing that you believe that there is someone that is above nature you're breaking the rules of nature because you're revealing your faith that is based on faith faith that is based on hope faith that doesn't have a clear evidence to it faith that is spiritual faith that it's like the light of the moon in the darkness faith in the good faith that it's hope faith that sometimes look fragile but it's the strongest thing that you have in your life because it's the only thing that gives you the ability to cross those hard hours and no evidence will heal you and no answer that you will receive and no promise and no guarantee from no person in the world will give you the same hope like that inner faith that exists inside of you from the nature, from the first days of your creation. Because the Creator plant inside of us a godly soul. And that godly soul knows its own nature. Inside of you, there's a spark that belongs in heaven. And that spark is always remembering who He is. And he always wants to attach himself back to heaven. Always wants to go back in the way that he came down to this world. He wants to come back. He wants to do tshuva. He wants to come back to the Creator. He wants not to be trapped in physicality. So he's always reminding himself, and that's our soul, always reminding ourselves that there is hope that nature cannot say the last word, that the decrees that happens on earth are not the last step, they're not the last decree. There's always hope. And we as those godly souls that are souls that came down from heaven to this world must let our souls express their own ancient memory and to count on our ancient memory in our journey back home. So to count on your inner understanding and to count on your inner faith in the godliness, in the greatness of the Creator, in His goodness, in all things that you are hoping for, is the only way to connect yourself to the real truth because the light is shining from within and the Creator Himself, He is the one that sent you to this world in that mission and for that mission He treasured inside of you that godly soul that will keep on reminding you of who you are and that you have a way back that that way back is exists and without that spark that's been planted inside of you, you would be lost. But the fact that He planted that memory, that ancient memory inside of you, that there is a Creator, even though that He's hidden, that there is a source of power and kindness, even though that cruelty and bad attributes are all around us, Dark, making the world to be to seem so dark and awful sometimes but the fact that inside of us there is a soul and we can feel it we can sense the inner goodwill the innocent nature of our being that's the only way to attach ourselves to the Creator and this is an inner thing that lives inside of you always. It's something that can be wake up by inspiring classes, 
fantastic books, conversations with the good friends, hearing a lecture, seeing a nice beautiful view, standing in front of the sea, seeing the sunrise, the sunset, whatever. A good movie can remind you. But that flesh, that moment of illumination will not hold on forever with you. Even if you saw the most inspiring sunrise or you participated in the most inspiring class ever, even the students of Moses that saw his shining face walking down from Mount Sinai, after a few hours they forgot the lesson and they failed in sins and in crimes. There is no guarantee on your spiritual success on your attachment to the truth except of if you will desire to attach yourself to the truth in every moment no one can link you can attach you can connect you to the truth no one no one is able to do that because if someone was able to do that it was Moses and you saw what happened in his days his people, his students, the most closest ones to him, failed. So what can you say? It was not in his hands. And it's not in the hand of another person, no matter who he is, and what his students are telling about him, which stories and fantasies they're going to create on him. It's not in his hands to redeem you. Because you have your own free choice and you are here on a mission and in that mission you should reveal the godly light that is treasured inside of you so for that you need to attach yourself in the present in the now every moment in that moment you should connect yourself to the truth means to be honest with who you are with your thoughts with people around you to be truthful and loyal to be kind and to be nice to be aware to yourself to the reasons why you act and why you react in a certain way if someone is asking you to give charity to help him to move his house to move an apartment to buy something he asks you to sit and to learn things that sounds perfect it's amazing what he asked you to sit and learn with him you need to be aware to yourself what is my reason to go and learn with him if my reason is good if my intention is pure to give that charity to help that person with his move to help him to do whatever he needs if my intention is good and pure and I am connected to the truth, I am loyal, I'm being nice now and kind now, so great. But if you're doing it because of a certain pressure, because of a certain fear, because you're afraid to lose something, and you're doing it out of your lackings, so it will not bring perfect results, it will not fix, it will show how broken you are and it won't heal you. You cannot go and learn from negative reasons, from bad reasons, because you're afraid what your father will tell you, because you're afraid what people are going to say about you. That's not a reason to serve. That's not a reason to pray. That's not the reason to learn and to attach yourself to the truth, because you're not attaching yourself to the truth because you are lying to yourself. You're making yourself believe that you're going to learn, but in reality, you're going not to be hurt by that person. You're not going to expand your knowledge and to, to, to express your light, the light of your soul, and to feed your soul. You're not going for those reasons. You're going because you're afraid what people will say and you're going because you're afraid to be rejected in the world to come. So that's for sure some negative thought that you have on the Creator in the back of your mind that is telling you that He won't accept you and that you're not worthy and that His mercy are not enough to reveal His mercy on you and to accept you and to love you. 
And you have all those foreign thoughts inside of your mind that are carving away a path that doesn't lead you to the truth. Because you're basing your steps on your sadness and on your lack of faith and on your lack of trust and on your laziness and on your fears so that's not a stable building so you cannot count on that learning to build you you cannot count on that prayer to be answered because you're not pulling, putting your, your stones on, on, on stable foundations you don't put them on, on, on solid ground it will collapse because lie doesn't have stability, doesn't have no legs. The truth got solid feet, solid legs. The word emet in the holy language, you write it from three different letters, Aleph, Mem, and Taf. All those three letters, you're writing them in the way that they have two legs. Aleph got two legs, Mem got two legs, Taf got two legs. They're stable letters with good foundation, every one of them. The word Sheker, that it's lie, is a word that built from three letters. And all those three letters are standing on one leg. Shin is standing on one leg, and Kuf is standing on one leg, and Resh is standing on one leg. All of them can fall. That's why when you are building your faith, so-called faith, your learning, so-called learning, your religion, so-called religion, on, on lies, on false, so it won't stand, it won't back you up, it won't bring you to the right results that you desire. You're going to keep Shabbat and you won't have peace in your house. You're going to eat kosher and it's not going to heal you. You're going to put fill in, you're going to pray from the Sidhu, you're going to cover your head, you're going to go to the mikveh, you're going to wear long sleeves, you're going to wear tzitzit made out of wool, you're going to learn Torah, you're going to memorize Mishnayot, you're going to tie the right, the left shoe after the right, you're going to do whatever Halakha is telling you, and you won't see good results. Why? Because you are trying to keep Torah mitzvot out of a and a mitzvah cannot come while sinning if a man cheated his wife and now he wants to make her happy and he will come to her and will tell her I love you is that word I love you will comfort her will give her satisfaction and joy like it was supposed to no it will make the wound even deeper because he is keep on increasing the lie he's keep on lying and lying and he's trying to plaster his lies with more lies and when he will be caught he will think to himself okay I must buy her a diamond necklace and he will buy and he will put few thousands of dollars on that gift and he's just putting salt on her wounds Instead of fixing, instead of going into the roots of his mistake and fixing himself and working on himself and healing himself from his problems, he's just making the lie go and, and, and destroying in deeper layers of his relationship with his wife. Even though the to our eyes it looks amazing. It looks fantastic. Look at that husband. Every day, 20 times, 50 times, he tells her, I love you. And he's buying her gifts and, 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 and everything. But he's lying. So the lie cannot bring good results. But when a person is saying the truth, and even the, if the truth is so poor, that that person is coming and saying to his wife, I lied to you. I made a mistake, now you can work. Now you can work. It's true that she can decide, okay, you lied to me, I don't want to live with you anymore. You lied to me, you messed up. She can decide. But at least from your side, you're being honest. 
you might be able to fix what that you ruined and spoiled. When we are always trying to justify ourselves and to show to the world that we're holding the religion of truth and we're Jewish and we're observant and we're keeping to our mitzvot and we're eating kosher and we're drinking chalav Israel and we're doing this and we're doing that and we're we're just making people believe that we are kosher when we are really not haven't even started dealing with our lackings. Without doing a real tshuva, you're nothing. The Zohar Kadosh is saying before that a person is doing tshuva, he doesn't have no existence in the world at all. When you're a liar, your words doesn't have no weight doesn't mean anything, doesn't count. Your words is worthless. But when you're saying the truth, and you're consistent with that, keep on looking for the truth. Keep on being honest about your purpose and the path that you're walking in. You're building your word. You're building your loyalty. You become to be a loyal person, and then your words mean something then your prayers will be answered, then your learning will be meaningful, will be powerful, and you will have the ability to heal, to heal yourself and to heal others. But as long as the person is lying to himself and trying to make believe, to fake it, trying to pretend that he's something that he's really not, so he's just a liar, that is presenting himself as someone that he's not. No matter how was that show and how many people bought that show, in the end you won't receive the seal of Hashem because Hashem's seal is the seal of truth. And only if you said the truth, you'll be accepted. No matter which truth, even the worst truth to say, I'm a liar, I just lied, I lied. At least you were honest about the fact that you lied. Now you have something in your hand. So we must attach ourselves to the truth. And not to hang ourselves and to lean ourselves on fake imaginations and false assumptions of other people that wants you to run after them and to believe like them to justify our actions without making the re root canals, fixing ourselves in, in, in the roots of our nature and working on our attributes, on our behavior, on our manners, and building ourselves to be honest people. Without that, no matter what you do and what people think about you, it doesn't worth anything. And with that, even if you're not able to learn, and even if you're not able to pray like you should, or that you feel that you should, and even if you're not able to fulfill your obligation in the most strict way of them all, at least you're being honest, at least you're a human being, you have an existence. The light of Hashem is shining upon you, because you are attaching yourself to the truth. And again, even if the truth is showing that you are in the dark even if the truth is showing that you are poor even if the truth is showing that your lack of so and so at least you are honest so the light of Hashem is shining upon you because you're attaching yourself to the truth and like I said the truth is something that every person can recognize inside of himself in the present no matter where you are, in the grocery store, driving in traffic, talking on your mobile, while talking to your friend, you can check yourself if you're being honest right now and you're a truthful person or that you are a faker and a liar. While standing in line to buy those groceries, you in front of yourself, in front of Father in Heaven, you are the only one that knows what is your real intention. If you're now faking, if you're now lying, while standing, you can make yourself look as someone else while standing. 
You can make th people think that you are handsome, that you're beautiful, that you're rich, that you're healthy, that you're strong, that you're happy. You're a liar. You want to work on your happiness? That's a different thing than to show the world that you're happy. You want to work on your, on, on, on your health? Great. You don't need to pretend to be something that you're not. Or at least to be aware to your lackings and to work on yourself, to be a person of truth. That will bring the blessing into our lives. That will bring the blessing into our actions. And it's in your hands. You don't need to be righteous for that. You don't need to be a genius for that. And you don't need to be attached to the head of the righteous ones of that generation. You just need to be an honest person. And already Hashem is with you. And the blessing Hashem will be in your hearts and in your houses and in your lives and in the lives of all of your beloved ones. Amen. Can you hear that song? Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Amuna Project is a non-profit organization. You are more than welcome to help us to support our activities around the world. We're reaching out to thousands of people. After a class like that, you can understand that I'm not going to lie to you. We are helping thousands of people around the world and we're reaching out to thousands and thousands. Please help us to spread words of Hashem, words of truth between all those holy souls that are seeking for the truth. And may the blessing of Hashem will answer all your prayers. Amen. We hope you enjoy this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.